For this video, I'd like to cover Dynamesh versus Z Remesh. Um, so often I see videos sort of like touching on the individual subject, like how to use a Dynamesh and how to use a Z Remesher. Um, but I don't see too often how they're linked together in the workflow and like how an artist would basically make use of them uh, to make to make characters and develop. And also at what stage, you know, if you do understand that you're switching from a Dynamesh to a Z remeshed um, object, at what stage do you do that? And also, um, how do you go about doing it? So to start with, um, hopefully you have a basic understanding of what a Z remesh and, or a Dynamesh is. I'd use the uh, information online just to have a brief look, but I'll go over it anyway. So the first thing is um, identifying to see if you have a Z remeshed version or if you have, or a subdivided version, or a, a Dynamesh version. So I've got two heads here. Um, the first one is subdivided and the reason I know that is because when I come to the geometry I can see that there's um, subdivision levels here that I can scroll through so it's all split up into quads uh, and I can scroll up and down and see um, sort of like the resolution getting added onto this object at the same time if I pressed uh, shift and F I can see the topology of the mesh and see it's all split into quads um, and when I zoom out you know I, I can I can see those sort of things the next one is uh, the Dynamesh version. So with the Dynamesh version, what you'll usually see is that there are no stacks, um, but also at the same time, if you do have Dynamesh activated, uh, once you come into Geometry and open Dynamesh, there's gonna be a toggleable um, Dynamesh activation here. So sometimes that's on and sometimes that's off. You know, So right now it's off, but it still has the geometry of a Dynamesh object. And the reason I can see that is if I press Shift F, and zoom in really close there's going to be small sort of triangles uh, and, and like increments of, of geometry here so that's how you sort of identify the two next is um, the example of how they used so you'll probably see that in in this project I've got two heads one is the Z remesh version or the subdivided one and the first one is a Dynameshed version. So when it comes to Dynamesh and having that activated, that's usually kept at the start of a workflow when you're uh, concepting things, binding them together, separating them. Um, they don't usually have that much information on them because every time you start to put details within the mesh uh, and then you do a re, re Dynamesh, you're gonna you, uh, lose those details. So at the stage where you're starting to put in details, that's when you should start to think about transforming it back um, or transforming it over to a Z remesh version. Um, while you are developing with the Dynamesh, there's things to take into consideration. So say you've got loads of tools that have been Dynameshed and they have quite a lot of active points. So they have a lot of uh, resolution that is gonna be quite taxing on your computer. So every time you move around, uh, you're going to lose some frame rates. So if you've got a good computer, that's that's fine. Keep yourself in the Dynamesh stage for as long as possible. Um, but if your computer is starting to tank and you're getting those frame rate issues, I'd suggest at trying to turn that uh, Dynamesh back into a Z remesher because um, the way ZBrush works is whenever you're moving the camera, you might see that uh, the camera is actually switching to uh, a visually lower version of the subdivision and it's saving us frame rates so it's nice and smooth whereas if we come back to the Dynamesh version there's no sort of transformation that's happening the computer is literally trying to force render all those um, faces so when it when it comes to making that decision of transferring over to the Z remesher you do also want to think about your workflow so are there any individual pieces that I'm confident that I finished and that I can transfer over to uh, a Z remesh and take all the all these benefits where you identify at what point you do make that transition um, it's at the point where you suddenly discover that you don't need the features that Dynamesh gives you so with Dynamesh um, we can split off objects recombine them and basically give a lot of geometry without too much fuss for the topology um, at the point where we do turn it into a Z remesh, it's somewhat of a lockout in the sense that once it is Z remeshed and we have those subdivision levels, um, we're not going to 
be able to take advantage of sort of like splitting the components apart, recombining and fusing uh, bits of clay together. We uh, ideally want it to have a full full set of silhouettes that we're comfortable with. Um, you know, at a later date, if I wanted to come to this uh, subdivided model and I wanted to do quite large edits, um, maybe if they're too large, I'm going to get a bit of stretching. So the geometry is not going to support itself. So there is a lot of forward planning that has to come in and which is involved when you're transferring over from Dynamesh to um, a Z remeshed version. You can do another Z remesh, but then again, that's just extending the workflow. Um, so it's better to, to have that forward planning and make it as short as possible. Then again, if you're missing the features of um, Z remeshing and using subdivision levels, maybe you do want to go over to that section. When you're in Dynamesh version, uh, you're obviously working at one resolution state, which can sometimes be difficult. So if we look at the advantages of Z remeshing, is that you know we can add obviously there's the camera that we the camera uh, frame rate that we went through but also at the same time there is the divisions that you can add so if we wanted to put uh, a large amount of small details in here obviously we can store that information at higher subdivision levels and then if there are larger changes that we want to make um, on a broader scale we can scroll down to the lower subdivision and make those changes so for example if I was using a move tool at a lowest subdivision, then it's affecting uh, a, a broader range of topology. But if I was at the highest subdivision, this move tool is probably going to be a bit more sharper, it's going to be laggier, um, and it's going to cause artifacts down the chain. So one of the benefits with Z remeshing is that you have access to all those divisions where you can uh, choose what resolution your geometry is going to be, and then your tool is going to um, take, take the benefits of being at that resolution. So another sort of case example of that is when you're using masking. So if you're masking something, obviously this is quite a sharp mask. Say I wanted to um, change the position of this ear, I would, while I was dynameshed, I'd, I'd only be in one resolution and I could only sort of paint it like this and I'd probably have to feather it so it has a nice um, soft translation. But the benefit with subdivided mode is that if I come back to the lowest subdivided, and then use um, use my mask, I can then soften it and it's gonna soften over a greater distance. So, you know, highlighting, highlighting that ear, say it's perfectly uh, masked out, I can then control click it once and then it's gonna give this really soft transition. I can then go back to the highest subdivision and then make all those masks changed. But, you know, if I'm at the higher subdivision and I try and do a similar thing, I can try and select the ear uh, and then when I try and feather it and soft it, soften it by pressing control and click, it's uh, it's almost non-effect. It's it's really tight, and that's because there's so much geometry in between here that it's trying to feather and average it out there. So we can take um, the benefits of being at a lower resolution um, and doing things like masking or selecting.